right, everybody. Welcome back to Can You Not? Coming to you live it's from not my live. apartment. It's not live. It's live for us. It's not live. It's not live at all. <laughs> it is live for the people who are here to witness it's gonna the It's six days before. <laughs> but Joe, how can it be live if we're all dead inside? Oh my oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> And that's that's just uh, setting the vibe for our theme for today, <laughs> which is seventh uh, grade, eighth grade. Well, just like general bad writing, poetry. writings from our younger days and yeah, um, poetry. the stuff that comes with that. So um, I think this is gonna be fun. It's a little bit different. Uh, Are we still gonna do ten minutes a piece? I think roughly. I mean, we can we can be a little more lax with this one. I think a little lax, a little lax. Yeah, a little lax, yeah, a, little a little laxative. Little... Ew, Joe. <laughs> That's the gross. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? But, uh, a little accent. <laughs> so yeah, I should uh, I should say that. Uh, oh shoot! No, I guess I don't have any follow up. I thought I did. Never mind. Oh, uh, the follow up can be that Brian's jacket and my pants are the exact same color today, <laughs> and we did not plan it. It's really <laughs> cool, and he's wearing black pants, and I'm wearing a black shirt. It's uh, weird. Further follow-up, even though we shouted out the Greater Cleveland RTA and they replied, Thomas Sanders did not reply to our last episode. No! Just, just rude, honestly. It's so sad. I'm going to marry him eventually. So. It'll be, it'll be so he'll listen to it eventually. Yeah, he'll have to. If he wants to put the ring on that. No, it'll definitely be way after that. <laughs> Thank you for marrying me. Will you please listen to this one time I talked really weirdly about you? Yeah, but I wanted to marry Thomas Sanders. You, we can't both. I'm just deciding this right now. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll let you have him. You'll I'll just have me. the faded. You'll let me. <laughs> I'll just have the faded corpse of David Bowie. Oh. Uh. <laughs> 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 That's a good trade. I'm okay with this. Uh. <laughs> You're fine with this trade off. <laughs> This is all from 2008. Ooh. And I just... Remember I, the Obama years? Oh, God. This is going to hurt me <laughs> physically to read. Okay, so I thought I was really deep stuff. Okay, so my favorite one that I'm going to read first is two lines long. <gasps> very, very right? nice. Right? A couplet. It's a couplet. Mm. Okay. What's You're, it called? It's called Every Word Ooh. Counts. Okay. Every other word that comes out of your mouth is sin. Every word gone unspoken is another point that could have made your life worth its trip to hell. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. I think I'm going to need you to reread that one. Yeah. <laughs> Take that in. Okay, okay. okay. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> okay it's okay. really, the last one's really a mouthful, okay? Every other word that comes out of your mouth is a sin. Every word gone unspoken is another point that could have made your life worth its trip to hell. Ooh. I'm thinking that for this episode, when we start... Each person starts, I'm gonna have like jazz music and like, soft bass playing. So if that's, you hear that, then you know that I added that in. Okay, I don't know. Uh, any, one, no, two, three, line, four, basically. five, six, seven. Pick a number between one and seven. Let's ask the audience. This is a live stream. <laughs> Shut up. Audience? Shelby, pick a number between one and seven. Five. Five. Seven, six, five. Okay, I'm not reading the title of this one. We're just gonna call it Thunder. I'm embarrassed by the title. Oh no, you gotta read the title. <laughs> I don't know what this means. It's called the Sharpened Cracking Thwack. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It okay. It's really kinky already. It's weird. I'm so weird eighth grader. Okay, I haven't read this until way earlier today, so I don't know what this is. Okay, Thunder in the background. Footsteps in my head. Lightning streaks across the sky. Running, running, running. Clouds roll in from the distance. Sparkling droplets begin to fall. God, the, the, what's, no, what I can't express to you is how bad the grammar is. Like, I just put punctuation <laughs> in places. Okay, so, um, clouds roll in from the distance. Sparkling droplets begin to fall. Flooding my mind. Sharpening the drawl. Ooh, I rhymed. Ooh. Clearer than any rainbow. Hazy cross the sky. Sharp as a lightning crack exclamation point. And droplets that fall cold. Every inflicted piercing sensation, that is rain, breaks barriers, tears them, I capitalized tears. <laughs> Ripping bricks to pointed, sharpened dust. Steady thwacking, thwack, that's an awful word. Steady thwacking against my window pane, <laughs> lulling me awake, dipping me in a state of hype, Ooh. and flinging me up like a blanket, tightened just as I land atop it. 
Take me into a state of sharpened black and white. Tear all unnatural from this ground. Let me feel the rain falling before it is I that fall down. Oh my. <laughs> I feel like the last time I heard the word thwack was probably like in a doctor's show. Right? Like hop on top, probably had the word thwack in it. <laughs> Uh, do I have to keep going? These are oh, so yes. bad. Oh, yes. You okay. must continue. <laughs> what even is all this? Oh, this one's hilarious. Okay, this one's just called When. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a very amber title. It's just when. <laughs> April 29th, 2008. Okay. Take away this memory. Tell me it's a dream. I was an eighth grader. This is like a fallout boy song. I guess. Um, <laughs> remove this reality, no matter how horrible the sin. I like the word sin a lot. Um, I want it all to be a joke. Tell me it will be okay. Make my heart whole again. I was in eighth grade. I don't want to feel this way. Teardrops fall on the floor and blood slides down the knife. What am I writing about? It was horrible to see you die, but it would have been worse to fight. Betrayal is a horrible thing, but what hurts most of all is knowing that I killed you when I didn't regret your fall. You never regretted one single thing, exclamation point. You said you just don't care. What happened to the you I knew, exclamation point, question mark. And then it just says, what happened, what happened? Why did it happen, what happened, what happened? I'm just so confused. What happened, what happened? What happened, what happened? When did then line break, this happened? And then when did I become the bad guy? And then what happened? So I said, what happened? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. And like 13 lines. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so eighth grade when we all thought that we knew what uh, tortured pain and we was. thought the real question was when. When? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What happened? What, what happened? happened? What happened? What happened? <laughs> I think I thought the question was what happened. <laughs> I don't think there was much. Else. <laughs> How much longer do I have? This is painful. Oh, you got more than five minutes. Oh god. Oh no. Okay, hold on. Let me. Ooh, that's not it. Uh. What happened? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. April 16th, 2008. You were on a roll in that April. I kept writing. I don't know why I was doing this. I probably should have stopped. Okay. <laughs> this one is called I Lost Myself Again. Ooh. Okay. I was in eighth grade. I can't get over this. I should probably like, stop interjecting. you lost interjecting. yourself before and you did it once more. Apparently, in eighth grade. <laughs> I don't... You went through that rough patch. Oh my god. If it was April of 2008, I was in seventh grade. Oh. Even better. You went through that rough patch in second grade. You just couldn't look back upon. <laughs> I guess. Okay, so I think this one's funny because, because of things. Okay, so this one's called I've Lost Myself Again. Sometimes I think back to so long ago. When things were easy fun, and time went slow. And I think of what I wanted to be, what I wanted to know, wanting to see. And I laugh because of what I once thought, because how could that have ever been me? But then little voice in my head asks, what if long ago you could see what's happened to her? What would she think? What would she say? Would I ask her to leave? Want her to stay? Because once upon a time long ago, I was still me, though who I don't know. I still had feelings. I still was short. I spelled sure the wrong way. I S H O R E. That's what I would be, and that I'd never change. But here I am, changed as could be. So now I think the opposite way. In a few years, what would I say to the me of now, to the girl not far away? How much will I change? Because people grow up and people change, but so does state of mind. Ooh. I don't want to lose the me of now, but I still want to grow up. I want ideas to develop and change, but I don't want to see them wither away. What is true to future me, and would I ever consider to agree? What do I think now of future me I'll never know, won't be here long enough to see? Actually, I kind of like that one, actually. Yeah? I was kind of about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to make fun to of it, and I was like, you know what, I was into that. <laughs> Good job, young Amber. Good job, 7th grade Amber. And the, the, the Amber that has changed beyond recognition apparently <laughs> okay can i read stuff i like now yes okay uh gotta find it gotta find it gotta find it gotta find it one two i have four that i like but i can't remember what the last one is <laughs> that noise you made. Go <laughs> i don't even know what i did <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay okay so, um, so many chipmunks outside okay so um, this first one I like a lot. I was starting to try and write in form. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is called a rondo. Ooh. Okay, and what I wrote a rondo? it. Um, it's this form. I I'd have to. Say a it's player. lol. Um, <laughs> but I'd, I'd have to look it up. But it's 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 just a poetic form. You can look okay. it up. So I wrote this um, July of last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 
It's called To Be a Spider in Its Web, and I actually like this one, so don't make fun of it, okay? Um, to be a spider in its web, and stand upon when winds flow and ebb, free from walls and worldly weight, a nomad's home's a rich estate. In any place I could embed, the quiet woods, some stately stead. To my own camp I would not wed, it blown or burned, I'd shrug away, to be a spider in its web. To go where eager feet had led, meander on or onward sped. Or if it strikes me, I will wait and set up camp upon your gate. Watch sunset's colors from my bed to be a spider in its web. Oh, I really like that last stanza, especially. <laughs> I'm really proud of this one. <laughs> I didn't know there's so many word rhymes for Ed. I figured it out, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, um, you can look it up. It's 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 just a thing. And I like yeah. got that meter down. That was really. I was gonna say the meter was really strong because I knew you always had trouble with that in the past. Yeah, I, I've I've gotten better. I think that was really good. Okay. How much time do I have? You got a little over like a minute. A second. Okay, I want to read two more. Okay, Let's or at least it. this last one. Okay, this one also one's, this one's also meter. Mm-hmm. Um, it's supposed to be a ballad. Okay, so this one's called the Ballad of the Skeleton King's Custodian. Oh. Get ready. <laughs> okay. Um, The skeleton king has a fearful hall, where many are challenged and many fall. Men and women face his wrath and leave behind a bloody bath. There's only one drain on the uneven floor. In each tile valley, a small pond of gore. The room must be cleansed of every pool. And that, my friends, is what I do. My squeegee's on the leg of a broom. I wear my wellingtons over my shoes and make my paces to and fro, pushing tides of blood as I go. It appears so peaceful when I'm alone, the rippling liquid across the stone, the serous voice flowing down the drain, vibrant and naive of recent pain. In terracotta beneath the streets, it dilutes and mixes and runs towards the sea, and then each soul is free from the land of the Skeleton King and his devilish band. I guess I'm thankful. It could be worse. I could be the one sating that brutal thirst. As well as I can, I ignore the slaughter. But still, I wish it were water. I like that one a lot. <laughs> that one was really good. Okay, and then do I have time to read one more? Yeah. Okay, this is the last if one. You can do it before I. No, I'm just kidding. No, okay. <laughs> this one, I usually write in free verse. That's why I wanted to read this last one. Okay, and this one I wrote actually in April 1st, 2016, so about a year ago. It's called April Edgewater. Day. Yeah, it's called Edgewater Drive, and Edgewater is a um, street behind my apartment building, like kind of right on the shore of Lake Erie, and it's where all the rich people live. Okay. So, um, all the houses are the size of God's fists on Edgewater. They sit wide and reach deep into the shore, crowning voluptuously into castle towers, stained glass, wide windows showcasing, shimmering chandeliers, tall bookcases, or tunneling entryways, gray light looking in on all sides. Behind them is the lake, stone gray sheet on a clothesline with its ribs of old stone docks pinning it to the shore. Between two houses is an empty lot broken asphalt leading into the grass, two trees framing a focal point that fell away. I stand between them, try digging my toes into the spring mud. I imagine manicured daffodils, Dah, daffodils, pools of ivy, an arching front door set into brick, and kaleidoscope rose-shaped eyes. But when I look, it's my apartment growing solid around me, alone and small, a Lego block on the fireplace in a living room. Empty space stretches around the walls, catabolicist sinking skin between ribs. I cannot grow a house. Mm, I think I like that one too. I write things, guys. I think the Custodians one's my favorite of the three. Yeah, I know. I, I'm proud of that one. Yeah. Yeah. I write things. Yay. That's all. Somebody else has to go now. <laughs> Thank you for your bravery. <laughs> all right. I could only find two that I personally wrote. Because mm-hmm. so you plagiarized all your other works. Right. Right. That's what it was. <laughs> uh, so... This first one is from either 6th or 7th grade, and it was, I'm sure, because of the name, it's called Around Midnight. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was inspired by my favorite jazz song, which is Round Midnight by Thelonious Monk. Yeah. So I will go ahead and read it. Around midnight, my thoughts take flight, flight into a soul at rest, no longer conscious of the world and its pest, sincere in its flow of feeling. Extraordinary sights of peace and tranquility. Dreams filled with hope for the days it will see. Phenomenal sounds of joy and sanctity. Feelings that will all soon end. End so that a new day may begin and the next night start all over again. Hmm. I thought that one was pretty I was that. that one's up all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is from 7311. 2011, summer of 2011. Can't think what grade I would have uh, been going. Probably. To. What, what year did you graduate? 13. So you would have been what a sophomore? You would have been a sophomore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah yeah yeah. 
Yeah. This one's from a very dark place. Oh. And reading it back, I realized I was very... I don't want to say very religious, mm -hmm. but like there's a somewhat religious undertone. To like it. spiritual. Yes, yeah, spiritual, yeah. but like Bible spiritual. Hmm. I'll go ahead and read it. Mm -hmm. It's called A Puzzle of a Picture. It is hard to describe the pain that I am feeling. It's like there's a puzzle within me and it's missing so many pieces. Not pieces that were misplaced, but instead ripped out of me. Like a tiger stalking its prey, they found and followed me till I was all alone, vulnerable. At the watering hole, drinking love and affection and hope and faith. That's when they decided to pounce. But they didn't act alone. They were forced to do this evil deed. Forced by one who is cruel and relentless and vicious. They were dragged through the gates of hell and this pain that is now being inflicted on me was pounded into their brains until they didn't even realize that what they were doing was wrong. Until they didn't realize that maybe, just maybe, it might be hurting someone. So now I pray like Jesus did that that day on the cross when he was nailed at the hands and nailed at the feet and taunted and torched till he hung his head and died. God, forgive me, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But God, don't just forgive them, but forgive me. Because unlike Jesus, your son and my savior, I am a sinner. And not just a sinner, but the worst kind of sinner. I am the man that would, uh, would to your holy house and praise your holy name and ask you for forgiveness for my sins and then go out into the world and sin all over again. I have lied and cheated and murdered my soul in doing so, but now I must stand up, stand up with the love I thought I lost. I must stand up with the strength of God and the Father by my side, stand with the pride of my ancestors and theirs before them. Uh, I must take back the pieces to my puzzle and finish the beautiful picture that you have painted on this black canvas, which is me. Uh, wow. Got real. I was gonna say, Deep in there. that's gotta be hard to think back upon that time, I bet. Yeah, it was a really dark place. But, I'm glad to have come through it. Yeah. All right. It's kinda it interesting to have like a record of that too. Like I look back upon stuff that I wrote or filmed like when I was at extreme lows and like, I'm kind of glad that I have some sort of record of it because mm -hmm. it reminds me, yeah, like, oh, I have come far from that. Or Yeah. It's funny because, <clears throat> like, looking back at the situation, like, it hurt what happened, but I don't see it the same way now. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I mean, I look at it as uh, kind of the same way. Like, in the poem, I talked about how I feel like the person did to me what they did because something similar happened to them so they were kind of desensitized but at the same time like now i i don't know i don't know i just look at it different plus the that was a very religious poem you yeah, know I could tell, yeah. whereas i'm more of a spiritual not so religious person now mm -hmm. you know right right it's different yeah you're but, a satanist <laughs> on a lighter note, <laughs> on a lighter note, while looking for some bad high school poetry, I thought, why not look up bad high school poetry on the internet? Oh, and okay. I found this contest. Oh, there's a contest. Oh, no. Yeah, and so people oh, were commenting funny. some of their high school poetry. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd read some. Yeah, I'm not gonna couple. give the names. Give but, us a couple anonymous ones. Yeah, this person. I don't know what the actual name is, but it says the trees cry all night because they know my plight. <laughs> <laughs> will he call again or message? Will he send? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Cry for me, trees. Cry. It's not, like, it's not about the devastation of the earth. It's about wanting someone to text you back. Yes. I'm waiting for a text so the trees will cry. That's I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, this boy. person. 
person named Anonymous said, The night creeps into my bed, but I am already there. Caw, caw, it is the crow. (laughs) (laughs) What? That's how it ended. Caw, caw, it is the crow. Interesting. Oh, God. (laughs) Micah said, The solitude surrounds me, choking me, taking away. Oh, crap. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, more people posted their bad poetry. So it up, up. Oh, nope, I lost that one. Let's read it. That's one. <laughs> if you can type, you can make movies over and over at the end. Why does what? that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> I feel like I should relate to that, though. Right. In some way. You know what? <laughs> it made me think. <laughs> Tore my soul open, flipped it over on a spatula. That's the that's my criteria for a good poem. <laughs> oh, right. I thought you were writing a new one. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this person said, "I do like Amtrak. Definitely would pr- would prefer that to a pod in space. <laughs> Maybe it's the broccoli, but I would never belch like that in real life." <laughs> I kind of like that one. Actually. I don't. No, thank you. I kind of liked it. What? I, no, thank you. What? It, set, it, it made me think of visual connections of things I wouldn't have thought of myself. <laughs> what? What connections did what? you make? Something about a pod in space instead oh, of God. Amtrak. What does it have to do with broccoli? I don't know. Broccoli and belching space Amtrak. Oh, I don't know where else are you going to go? Where does belching thing? in space go together? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. It's a juxtaposition I wouldn't have thought of. I thought it was fun. You can't just say words. A plus, 10 out of 10. No. <laughs> 11 out of 10. That's not how that works. Oh, okay. This is a bad anonymous one. Okay. My Pontiac hates me. It has sticky vinyl seats, which melt in Texas sun like tears on my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Only sticky. Tears <laughs> on my pants? Only sticky. I feel like this is an innuendo, oh, and I don't my. like it. <laughs> Oh. No, thank you. Oh boy. I used to like when I started writing, like in early high school. I had mm-hmm. another friend or two other friends who also wrote, so we used to like write back and forth to each other. And that's I didn't I didn't even get to that because I was just in like two thousand eight, and that was in like two thousand nine ish. And that's also really really bad because it, there's like no context for any of it, and it's oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. You should try to dig up some of those. No, sometime. thanks. Should we have a sequel episode? No, we shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> we moved from junior high up to freshman year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll progress the things we wrote in second grade. I don't think I wrote anything in second grade. I wrote some dumb journal entries in second grade. Oh, oh we could read just Ooh, dumb I journal have, entries. I have so many journal entries. Oh, I do like... too. Oh, God, next up, so just journal entries. <laughs> Well, if you, if you ever go on my YouTube channel, Poji Joe, you can find a video of Jesse reading my former diary entries from, uh, like, when I was, like, 11 years old, and there's some pretty ridiculous stuff in there. There's one where oh, I talk God. about my poop. And how entry. much you hate Becca. You know, I hate my sister, apparently. I, I don't remember hating her that much, but okay, I guess I did. I um, wrote a very descriptive, like, thing about my... Uh, my foreign exchange brother when he first came here. Yeah. And, like, this was, like, the first week, and he was really sick. Like, he had, like, a really bad cold or something when he first got to Cleveland because he's from Senegal. Mm -hmm. And then, like, it's funny looking back at it because I was describing it like he was, like, a child soldier. (laughs) He just came over from, like, a war. And he was, like... But just come to find out, he had a cold. It was hilarious. I used to, um, so, this is kind of embarrassing, um, <laughs> so I used to be on Neopets, right? Oh, and on yeah. Neopets, if you lied and told them you were, like, older than 13 or something, you could get on the forums, oh. and they had a text-based roleplay forum, which is, like, playing D&D, except no rules. I think you told me about Yeah, this. so I used to, I had this one text-based, like, roleplay that went for, like, two years, so I, like, started... Di- I started keeping track of them, and it's still on a hard drive somewhere. Just, like, this whole thing, like, this, these characters that we made up and we were using. It was really bad. It was this Naruto-based thing, and I had really, really <laughs> shit character names. It was so, so bad. 
speaking of nearly extinct media, we have a brand new sponsor. <laughs> what? It's called Vinyl Me, please. And it's a record of the month club. Dope. They brag that they're the best damn record club, in fact. Every month, Vinyl Me, Please features one album that is essential to the modern vinyl collection and sends it to thousands of members worldwide. Each record is pressed ex- exclusively for Vinyl Me. Uh, you can get features that you can't get anywhere else, like bonus tracks, inserts, colored variants. It comes back with, packed with a 12 inch by 12 inch album inspired art print and custom cocktail pairing recipe. That sounds pretty amazing. Wow. What? It makes me want vinyl me, please. A cocktail? What? <laughs> I stopped listening. Custom cocktail pairing recipe. With the vinyl? <laughs> yeah, like cocktails that would go well with that vinyl. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, um, I need an example of a cocktail <laughs> and vinyl combination. I do too, kind of. Like. So yeah, Jesse and I have been talking about getting a vinyl for our, our vinyl. A vinyl. A vinyl record One player. Vinyl. A singular vinyl. <laughs> no I used to, I, 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 I didn't finish my sentence. <laughs> it's it was, not even a record. It's just a sheet of vinyl. Because <laughs> <laughs> I used to collect a bunch of records. I had a bunch of LPs and EPs have you ever, stacked. Have you ever been to Phoenix Coffee in Ohio City? Yeah. They play mm. records. Like, all their music oh, okay. is from a it's record player. If you look above the counter, they put the album oh, cover cool. up on a shelf. It's really cool, mm. yeah. All the My cool things now are... have a vinyl record player. Uh, yeah, I mean, I used to have one growing up, but I don't have one anymore because it was a family one. But they say the laser things are the way to go now because that, that doesn't scratch it at all, you know? But I digress. To, <laughs> let me re-scratch that. To join their re-scratch record. Re-scratch that. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> to join their record club, go to joinvmp.com slash canyounot. Again, that's joinvmp.com slash canyounot. To join Vinyl Me, please, uh, today. Like I said... Get all this cool stuff. Get your cocktail, cocktail recipes. recipes. Do they send you the cocktails? And no, the cocktails? they send you recipes. They're already sending you free, or not free. They're so, sending you vinyls. But I want cocktails. They're sending you records. I just want the cocktails. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll have to get some cocktail uh, sponsors next time. For sure. Or you could just also, you could just bring cocktails. <laughs> anyway, plans start at $25 a month. You'll love it. I always liked to write when I was growing up. But uh, it wasn't until eighth grade that I was convinced to do this thing in Ohio called Power of the Pen. And it was, it's only in Ohio, but it, wait, what? I know about that. You know about that? It's cool stuff. It was pretty cool. So there was like a local round, and then there was a regional round, and then there was a state round. And I actually ended up going to state in eighth grade. Wow. So, um, and I, and and not to brag, but I have a couple trophies from doing this. Thing. So like, it, I actually won first place. Am I the only one who is reading bad poetry? <laughs> like, no, no, no. These stories are still pretty ridiculous, if I remember correctly. I haven't actually read any of these since a long time ago, including I haven't even read it. Joe, today. are you published in a book? It's technically a book, but it was it was for the power of the pen people, so it wasn't like. Not like so. It's not like a published it's not like book legit, or anything. Legit. No, it's published it's by just a joke. book. You know, <laughs> just a published it's book. Power of the Pen book. There's stuff on. The, what's it say on the back? Oh, are those like people saying it's really good? Yeah, well, not our writing, but Power of the Pen. Like, there's no oh, Lowry. oh, oh, okay. There's actually a quote from me in here somewhere talking about quote? Power of the Pen gave me the happy. <laughs> Did you turn into Mickey Mouse? I like your young Joe. <laughs> I feel like I do a Mickey impression once an episode now. <laughs> it's so gross. Uh, my voice was really high pitched when I was very young, so that would not actually be too out of the question to. <laughs> Does this mean we like should have read it like we wrote the poetry? <laughs> yeah. Should I go back? I don't. I don't <laughs> think I've changed. I'm pretty much exactly. I'm wearing the same clothes. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, I still have clothes from clothes. seventh grade. Like. Oh, oh man. I don't. I can't even fit my clothes from like. 
freshman year. I have college. been the same. She is just the same old. But you already finished your most radical change when you wrote that poem in 2008. That's you true. You completed your evolution. <laughs> there was nowhere else to go at that point. <laughs> I cut off my hair and that was just the end. Like, That's when you're like, I am done mentally, physically, and emotionally. I was done growing. mentally, emotionally, and physically like a year before I started college. And it only got worse and worse. Uh, anyway. Anyway. So this one's called Once Red, De- Now Dead. And the whole premise of Power of the Pen is that you uh, had a, a, a prompt that was given to you, and you had like, I can't remember if it was 30 minutes or 45 minutes to write the whole story and turn it into them. So I think the prompt for this one was uh, write a story from the perspective of a newspaper. <laughs> do they still have Power of the Pen? I believe they do. I think it's only gotten bigger and better, if anything. I think they now have Pencil of the Pen for even younger writers. <laughs> pencil of the Pen. Or, I mean, a Power of the Pencil. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I meant. That one was confused. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, I don't even know. What of the what? No, the what of the bird of the bee of the moth? <laughs> anyway, okay, so Who here's... Who the where? Who's, uh... <laughs> what happened, what happened, what happened? <laughs> 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 Cry for me, tree. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Once Read, Now Dead by Joe Kowalski, circa 2009. My name is the New York Times, February 3rd, 1986. I was once considered a member of what I think is the finest newspaper ever. Now I'm demoted to burn with firewood, in a fireplace of all places. Oh, haven't these people ever heard of archives, I asked. I could contain very important information. Give it a rest, Mr. Fancy Pants, said the crumpled paper burning next to me. How do you think I feel? I'm just a small hometown paper on a slow news day. I can see that, I said, as his headline, Cat Has Three Kittens, burned away. Mr. First Place. Oh, yeah? You both are less important than I am, said another newspaper ball. I was born on March 19th, 1995. What's so important about that day, I asked. Well... I don't really know, he answered very disappointingly. Shut up, all of you, called the ripped up box. Papers were born to be burned. No, I said, papers were born to be read. Or recycled, mumbled an environmentalist magazine. (laughs) I'm still important, I said with dignity. I'm making heat for humans. Oh yeah, called the torn cupcake box. I've got nutrition facts. Give it a rest, cuppy, no one reads those. (laughs) <laughs> Everyone was silent. We got smaller and more charred. What is the meaning of life? I asked quietly. Everyone groaned. Let's not start with that question, moaned an indignant log. Ooh, crackled an old drawing. I know, the meaning of life is, um, uh... The meaning of life has to do with what we make of it to change others for the better, called the hippie newspaper. Hippie newspaper? <laughs> yes. Give me another question. Okay, I paused. I soon let out another question I was wondering. Where do we come from? Ooh, popped the old drawing again. Wait, don't stop me. It's, um, uh, we are all one because we are from the same substance. Trees, said the hippie. Give me another, dude. I (laughs) I forgot about all this. Oh my goodness. I finally let out the question I had been burning, no pun intended, to ask. Oh, what do you mean, God. no pun intended? <laughs> what do you burning. mean, Joe? <laughs> it's clearly pun intended. Where do we go when we die? All of us were almost burned away. Finally, the hippie spoke oh, up. God. Up, beyond, to the afterlife. Hey, cried the old drawing. You didn't give me time to answer. Do, do you mean heaven, I asked. Nah, man, that's for the humans. I mean we fly away as ashes. And with a great gust of wind, all of us blew out of the chimney as ashes and glided through the air. I laughed. I guess we do have a purpose. Gee, this is fun. Hmm, grunted the old drawing. You could have given me more time. We swooped across the sky, enjoying our afterlife. Eventually, we drifted apart from each other. And eventually, I landed. I flew in through an open window and landed in none other than the factory of the New York Times. Two pages were laid out to dry. Ah, what a glorious day, said one. It's nice to be so important. Aye, aye, piped the others. Listen, youngsters, I said, don't be so conceited. We're here to serve the humans. The two papers gaped at one another. Did you say that, old chappy? One asked. 
Why, no, my friend, said the other, and they shrugged as they were folded and taken away. <laughs> it's a circle. <laughs> I'm the environmental magazine. <laughs> yeah. the you could have recycled it. Like <laughs> I literally yelled at somebody today because he threw a bottle away. Like I'm not joking. Oh like, my god! <laughs> you like bash him over the head with it afterwards. It's like Chris, there's a recycle bin right there. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a recycle bin right there, especially in the environmental magazine. That was something, Joe. That was. What's the thing. meaning of life? It's like, oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> the meaning of life explained. I don't know, story. eighth grade Joe. <laughs> oh man, I th- do I have time for one more? I have four more minutes. Go for it. Would you prefer to hear Mr. Truth or the jester who wasn't funny? Is this whole book you? I got in a couple entries. Uh, <laughs> pick one, Joe. Uh, What's your favorite? Mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember which Do one. Do the jester better. one. The jester one? Okay. Uh-huh. The jester who wasn't funny by Joseph Kowalski. Once long ago in the kingdom of Magnik, there was a court jester. Now, we all know that the role of a jester was to make someone laugh, but unfortunately, this jester could not do so. In fact, this jester was about as funny as the taste of sauerkraut. Well, um, howdy, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this was a typical beginning to the jester's jokes. I was, well, you see, yeah, yeah, I was on my way to the palace today when I met a chipmunk. No, 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 was it a draft? Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. So I say, um, yeah, and so on and so forth. He was pathetic. One day, news arrived that a beautiful princess from Nilribo was to visit the castle. She was quite bad-tempered and spoiled as well. Although she had the body of a goddess, she had the attitude... Oh. <laughs> 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 you didn't say she was pretty! You said she Horny had the, little eighth the grade body girl. of a goddess! Horny little eighth grade <laughs> gave her the body of a goddess. <laughs> Although she had the body of a goddess, she had the attitude of Simon Cowell. (laughs) What did her face look like? (laughs) I'm gonna go with Simon Cowell. (laughs) Paula Abdul. Why was the (laughs) person not Randy? <laughs> this princess has Randy's face. Oh, I've decided. Now I'm visualizing it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Why was the princess coming? No one could really say. Some said that the king had invited her to meet the prince. Others said she had invited herself. And still others said that she was really looking for someone to run the daycare center in Nilribo. These were the psychos of the town. <laughs> Enter the princess. Her long, wavy hair blew in the breeze as she greeted the king at the castle moat. The king smiled devilishly and walked her in personally. Everything was going well until... So, kingy, do you have some entertainment around here? I'm bored. The king gulped. Well, um, how about a puppet show? Nah, the princess yawned. How about a jester, kingy? Got any jesters around here? Hmm... Well, of course, the king sputtered. <laughs> now you sit your... <laughs> Jesse just can't. <laughs> Jesse's face. <laughs> We're just going to be looking at these while you read. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Your vocal impression <laughs> of himself. Just reestablish my virginity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now well, you sit your pretty little self down and I'll call for him. The king began to sweat for he knew the jester wasn't funny. And so the jester was called in. The king wasn't the only one who was nervous, for the jester was too. He had never seen a princess before. Entertain me, bub, commanded the princess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your majesty, said the jester, and he began his joke. I met this bird once, see, and, um, yes, yeah, see, he was an owl. Wait, no, it was a flamingo, because, um, I forgot to mention I was in Japan, or was it California? You get the picture. On and on went the jester. Everyone started drifting off to sleep. The king began to doze. The queen began to snore. The knights nodded off. The maidens hit the hay. And soon the only two people awake were the princess and the jester. It was then that the jester paused, for he realized everyone was asleep. Oh darn, he moaned. This happens every time. And the princess laughed. She laughed so hard it woke everyone up. She laughed so loud, the castle began to shake. She laughed so loud that the whole village of Madnik could hear her, although everyone who heard could not remember enough to even tell you what day this happened on. 
I don't know why that was important. <laughs> You're exactly what I'm looking for, the princess grinned. You see, I'm not only a princess, but I also run the local daycare center in El Rebo. I can, never get the, <laughs> I can never get those crazy kids to fall asleep. But now that I found someone as boring as you, I'm saved. Why, they'll drop asleep in five seconds with you around. The jester grinned. So does that mean I can come with you? <laughs> Jesse laughing about it. <laughs> sure thing, kids, said the princess. Let's go. And off walked the jester and the princess, the most unlikely duo. And that is the story of how the jester got his one and only laugh. Moral. Listen to psychos sometimes. The end. You just Listen had this picture of Randy up on my <laughs> computer, up on my Randy phone. Jackson. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> I you want you to run my daycare it. center. <laughs> <laughs> We're watching Randy give this whole story. I would With the it. body of a goddess. Yep. I mean, to be fair, he already does have the body of a goddess. We're all goddesses <laughs> in our own special <laughs> way. <laughs> so, yep. Those are some stories from 8th grade that Joe. magical, Joe. Thank you so him. much. Yep. <laughs> if you would like to check out more episodes that are not us being embarrassed the whole time. Oh. You can go to soundcloud.com slash CYN podcast. We're on some of your fo- favorite podcasting apps. We're on <laughs> iTunes, Twitter, Facebook. You can Twitter. email us at canyounotpodcast at gmail.com. Also, shout out to uh, Melissa, who has been listening to the show lately. Let me read what she said. If I can find her quote real quick. She says she likes our casual atmosphere and we click really well together in conversation, which makes it relaxing to listen to. We're relaxing. Mm-hmm. So oh, thanks, Melissa. Right. We're pretty, re- I wish you could see, we're pretty relaxed if right now. Like, so, we are Brian's all, like literally laying almost Brian on the and floor. I melted into this food time. Like. <laughs> what did we learn today? Oh. I learned. I learned that I really. What happened? Like, <laughs> what, happened? what happened? What happened? What uh, happened? What happened? Uh, I learned. Wait, what happened? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I learned that there's a contest that we all need to enter for one. Oh, yes. <laughs> and that eighth grade Joe was really horny. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you learn today, Joe? I learned that, uh, listen to psychos sometimes. That was the moral of the story, apparently. (laughs) And people who disagree, can you not? Can you not? Can eighth grade. What happened? Oh no. (laughs)